Okay, in our ISN, the sun tangents to circles. A tangent to a circle intersects the circle in exactly one point called the point of tangency. And then I'll highlight my tangent line. This point where it intersects the circle right here, that is called the point of tangency. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> There are important relationships that involve tangents. A common tangent is a line ray or segment that is tangent to two circles in the same plane. So it's just the common tangent here would be the line that's between these circles. This just happens to be a picture where one circle is um, above the tangent line, one is below. These two are on the same side of the tangent line. And that's just called the common tangent. The properties that we need to know about tangents. If RS is a tangent to the circle with center P, then RP and RS must be perpendicular because RP is a radius. Now that's worded a little bit different right here. A line is tangent to a circle if and only if it's perpendicular to a radius at the point of tangency. So if this is a tangent line, it must be a right angle at angle R. The radius is RP. This is just the converse and inverse. When it says if and only if, you can write the, the original statement and its converse. So if RS is perpendicular to RP right there, and what that means, of course, perpendicular forms a right angle. We're supposed to know the word perpendicular. Okay, and it says then. SR is a tangent to the circle with center P. The converse is true. If SR is tangent to the circle with center P, then these must be perpendicular. Another property is that if there are two segments that are drawn from the same point outside the circle and they are tangent to the circle, then those segments must be congruent. If two segments from the same exterior point, this would be the point out here, let's call it S. If that point on the X is outside the circle and both of these segments are tangent to the circle coming from the same point S, then those um, segments must be congruent. So these would be equal. This, let's make this one R where the point of tangency is on the top and T with the point of tangency on the bottom. So it will match this statement. If segment SR and ST are tangent to the circle with, seg with center P, then segment SR is congruent to segment ST. Okay, next we're going to do some examples of how to use this. So in the first diagram, it says segment AB is tangent to the circle at, with center C. Find X. Well, I want to know the length of AB. What I've discovered or just learned or hopefully that I read was that if AB is a tangent to the circle and BC is a radius, what's going on right here? There's a right angle. Okay, so this has to be a right triangle for AB to be a point of tangency. So AB is tangent to the circle with center C, so AB is perpendicular, forms a right angle to radius BC. C to D is also a radius. You see how BC goes from a point on the circle to the center. So does D to C. So that would make D to C also be 8. Now, because you already know from A to D is 9, and we know D to C is 8, we now know A to C is 17. <coughs> Use the Pythagorean theorem with right triangle ABC in order to find X now. So 17 is across from the 90, so it would be the hypotenuse. Okay, and this would be a leg where the 8 is on the BC, and this would be a leg that we're trying to find on AB. The Pythagorean theorem says leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. 
reiterate that, although we've talked about it many, 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 many times this year. So we're going to put in leg of x. So x squared plus 8 squared equals 17 squared. We'd be filling in the values on that right triangle. x squared plus 64 then equals 17 squared, which is 289. Next, we would subtract 64 from both sides. That would give us x squared equals 225. Then we would take the square root of 225 to get or square root of both sides, which would give us 15 for x. Okay, so that's how we're going to use stuff that we know and new things that we're learning to solve. Example 1 down here, assume the segments that appear to be tangent are tangent. Well, since point C is the end point of both the segment C to B and C to D, we know that those are going to be congruent. So CB and CD are congruent segments. So we set X plus 3 equal to 7. Next, we would subtract 3 from both sides and get X is 4. Simple enough. On number 2, if ZB, the ray ZB is a tangent, then there must be a right angle at C because yz is a radius. Therefore, I've got a right triangle. I know that y to a is another radius, so it would be the same as y to z, 21. And then I could say, well, 21 plus 8 would give me y to b, and that would be 29. So what I've got here is a right triangle with a hypotenuse of 29, one leg of 21, and the other leg I want to find. I just thought I'd draw it out here to the side because of all the writing we did on the picture. Okay, so we just do leg squared plus leg squared, so we're going to have x squared plus 21 squared equals 29 squared. Please do your Pythagorean theorem. 21 squared is 441. 29 squared is 841. Subtract 441 from both sides. <coughs> x squared is 400 then. Take the square root of 400. And that would be 20. So x equals 20. doesn't have any units, so I'll leave it without a unit label. Okay. Next, there's another page on tangents. So, 10 5 tangents continued. Circumscribed polygons. Yesterday, we were talking about inscribed polygons, which meant that they were inside of circles. Now we have a polygon is circumscribed about the circle. So now the polygon's on the outside and the circle's on the inside. All the sides of the polygon are tangent to the circle. What does this mean about congruent segments? Well, it would mean that if you've got a point outside of the circle and you have two tangents drawn to the circle from that point, they are congruent to one another. So those would have to be equal. Now, since GH, JK is a square, and it's circumscribed about circle with center Q, you know GH is equal to HJ, which is equal to JK, which is equal to KG. So that would mean all of these little pieces or segments are congruent. Now, the points of tangency are right smack in the middle of those segments. So those segments got bisected, all those sides of the square. But this one down here is not a regular triangle. It's actually a, a scalene triangle. But ABC is circumscribed about the circle with center O. Find the perimeter of triangle ABC. <coughs> I might use some highlighters now if you like to do that. ABC is circumscribed about the circle with center Q. So points D, E, and F 
are points of changency. That's here and here. So what would be congruent? Well, this segment would be congruent to this segment. Going this way from F to C would be congruent to E to C. And then also from A to D would be congruent to A to F. So now that I've marked that, I'm going to go ahead and put the numbers on. Because if this blue one is 6, this blue one over here is 6. Those two are equal. If F to C is 8, then E to C is 8. And finally, if A to F is 12, A to D is 12. So now we can find the perimeter of the figure. Okay, so what segments are congruent? We just identified them. And to find the perimeter, that is the distance around the outside. It's going to be two 12s, 12 plus 12, or you can do 2 times 12, plus 6 and 6, or you can add 2 times 6. Oh, I did those in the wrong color, but I guess it really doesn't matter that much. We're adding up all of those numbers. And we're going to add on another 8 and an 8. Okay, so if you were to add these up, 40, 52 is the distance around the outside. For each figure, find the perimeter. So we're going to be doing this multiple times, and of course it will be on a quiz or test. If you see this picture, the first thing you want to do is say, all right, if you've got a tangent coming from that point to the circle, and that's 13, then over here is another 13. If you've got a point outside the circle coming to the circle right here is 17, then you got another one over here that's 17. And then coming from 10 to a point out here, these two would match. That would be 10. They asked how long it is for x. It would be 13 plus 10, so that's 23. Then it asks, well, how, what's the perimeter? I prefer you ignore that this was 23, and you just start adding pairs, okay? So I think you'll not make any repeat additions on accident if you just do two 17s. So you got 17 plus 17 plus... You got two 13s plus 13 plus 13 plus you have two 10s plus 10 plus 10. Or I don't know why I double plus there, but anyway. All right, so you're adding all those up, and some of you might be able to do that in your head. Some of you prefer to use your calculator. I see this as 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. You see how I was adding that? I was using some of the numbers that would be easily added. Not that you have to do that. Okay, number eight, what segments are congruent? Well, there's a point outside of this circle that has a five on it from here to here, so this would be five matching it there. This one's eight, so this one's also eight. So eight equals x plus two. So let's go ahead and solve for x. Subtract two, and we get x is six. Going this way from the 4 here is matching the 4 over there. You have to put a 4 there. And on the other final side, um, oh, what color did I use? Red. Let's see. If that's 9, then the one next to it over here is 9, coming from that same point. So now we do our perimeter. We add 5 and 5. Plus, we're going to add on 9 and 9. Plus. 8 and 8, and I don't care what order we did it. You could have started with the 4 and the 4, whatever we did. We need to add up all this stuff. Okay, so 4 plus 4 plus 5 plus 5 plus 9 plus 9 plus 8 plus 8. What is it? I think it's 52 again. 9, 18, 36, um, plus 16. 52, isn't it? Okay, and then this picture down here, mine's all in color, and I think because it was in color that you can't read something on there possibly, right? You can't read this segment. 
it's a radius. And then I don't like how they wrote the diameter right here. Why do you think I'm saying that? It looks like it's just from here to here, doesn't it? And that's not true. Okay, so just I'm just going to cross off that word there, and I'm going to say let's draw from here all the way to here, all the way across the circle. That's a diameter. <coughs> now they drew a tangent out here and showed the right angle. They got a picture of a chord. And then one I haven't mentioned, which actually we're not covering this year um, because we're doing option 6, 10.6 is optional, and so is 10.7. This is called a secant segment, but I do want you to I'd be able to identify what a secant is. A secant is simply a line that cuts through the circle. Okay? It's sort of like a chord, but it has arrows on it. It continues past the circle. Okay, let's jump to our packet for today, which is 10.5, of course. Oops. Why is this not cooperating? One second. Just want to make sure I'm still recording. Okay. All right, 10-5 tangents. My pen's not cooperating for a second here. All right, so at the top, you have just a couple of blanks to fill in. Fill in A tangent to a circle, again, intersects the circle in exactly one point called the point of tangency. you got a nice picture drawn on your worksheet for you already showing that point of tangency. We have already done this in our ISN, so bear with me that some of these are repeats, okay? A common tangent, we already discussed, is a line, ray, or segment that is tangent to two circles in the same plane. So these pictures were in our ISN. They're in our packet as well. These are just two extra pictures down at the bottom showing you that you could have the circles kind of smushed together and have the same point of tangency or opposite sides. That's pretty much just like this one. Okay, a line is tangent to a circle if and only if it's perpendicular to the radius. So we know that angle R here would have to be a right angle. We also know that these segments, if they are coming from the same point, let's label that S, the left R, and the right T. If those are two tangents coming from that same point out here, these segments must be congruent. You already drew on the right angle here, I believe. All right, first example, AB is tangent to the circle with center C, and AB is X, and it's perpendicular to radius BC. So we've got a right triangle. CD is a radius, so CD would also be A. So this is exactly the, one of the problems we did in the ISN, except it's nice and big. Uh, 9 and 8 is 17. We need to find x, so we did Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus 8 squared equals 17 squared. We found 64 and 289, and we subtracted 64. We got 225, so this is, again, a repeat of the problem in the ISN. Square root of 225 is 15. Okay, so we found x was 15. Anybody still need this? Okay, so now let's get to our questions. Um, we did have this one in our ISN. Uh, we said since C and CB is coming and CD are both coming from the same exterior point, those tangents need to be equal. X plus 3 was equal to 7 then. We subtracted 3 from both sides and got X is 4. Number two was not in our ISN, but what's X going to be really fast? Yep, 12. Those chords have to be, or those uh, tangent lines need to be congruent. Assume the length segments that appear to be tangent are tangent. So that's for, therefore, we assume ZB is a tangent, and we have a right angle there by Z then. 
We would then do the fact that YA is a radius and YZ is a radius, so this is 21, which makes the hypotenuse of this triangle 29. Since this is a leg, this is a leg, and the hypotenuse is 29, we do the Pythagorean theorem to find X. So X squared plus 21 squared equals 29 squared. This one was in our ISN as well. X squared plus 441 equals 841. We subtracted and got 400, and we took the square root and got 20 for X. Okay, I know I went quickly through those, but I did so because we already did them. This one is different. Okay, we want to find that whole HK. So X squared, that's the hypotenuse of that right triangle. This would be a leg, this would be a leg. So it's going to be X squared equals 15 squared plus 20 squared. That's 225 plus 400, which is 625. Take the square root of 625, and you should get 25 for x, the hypotenuse. We've done Pythagorean theorem so many times, I went pretty quick. All right, Pythagorean theorem on this one as well, but wait a minute. They want me to find u to t. What can I get from Pythagorean theorem? What would I be able to do from using the Pythagorean theorem? What could I find? Carolyn? Right, which would be what segment? Okay. So we're going to be able to find that using Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to call it Y just because it's not where the X is, right? They just want U to T. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find this whole thing with my Pythagorean theorem. So that would be the hypotenuse. So y squared would equal 15 squared plus 36 squared. I grab the calculator and I type 15 squared plus 36 squared. Get the calculator. Oh, I don't know why it wasn't. I thought it was already on. So 15 squared plus 36 squared. You guys probably already got the answer, and I'm still typing. Okay, so we got 15, 21. We need to take the square root of that. And we got 39. Y squared was 15, 21. Square root of 15, 21 came out to be 39. Now, that's not the answer to the question. So if this is 39, how do we find X? Well, U, R to U is how big? 15. Okay, so we'll do 39 minus 15, and X is going to be 24. Okay, so sometimes you have to find something else to get what you really want. All right, this one's straightforward Pythagorean theorem. X squared is equal to 24 squared plus 17 squared. Please calculate what X is. And this is not going to come out nice, meaning it won't be a perfect square. At least I don't think it does. Did you get 772 and then take the square root, or did I do something wrong? Was it 24? Oh, it was 17? Oh, my gosh. 17 squared plus 24 squared. That's what I'm supposed to do. So you guys, good. You caught. You knew I was wrong. That's important. <laughs> 865. And what did you get when you did the square root of that? What was it? 29? Oh, 0. 0.4. Yeah, it's got decimal. All right. We do need to do the whole decimal, 29.4. Do not round it off to something else. Was that 865 I took the square root of? Okay, so 29.4. All right, circumscribed polygons. Let's do a few more examples together. In this hexagon, what I want you to understand is it says it's regular because it's telling us all the sides are equal right here. 
that means all of these little segments would be the same size. Every single one. Yuck, yuck. All right, enough of that. The square, It's this is the one that was in the ISN. The sides are congruent in a square, so all of these segments would have been congruent as well. And that's because the tangent points would be the midpoints of the sides. And because if you have two tangents drawn from the same external point, those, those seg tangents are congruent. So this is D to B is 6, just like B to E is 6. E to C would be 8, just like F to C is 8. And A to D is 12, because A to F is 12. To get the perimeter, you add up all those sides. 20, blah, blah. add them up. I see it was 8, 40, 52. It was just like the one in our ISN. Okay, so let's go for third. Well, this one was in our ISN as well because this was 10, this was 10. And then we found out X was 23. Over here, these both are 13, and then both of these are 17. So then we added all up, the, up all the sides, and we got the perimeter was 80, right? I, I went through that quickly because we had it in our ISN. This one was not in our ISN, but if this is 8, this is 8. So 8 equals 2x, which means x is 4. And if that's 8, this is 8. And if, oh, if that's 16, these are all 8, aren't they? All right, so if I want the perimeter of that square, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. 8 times 8 would give me a perimeter of 64. Now, you could have looked at it as all the sides are 16. 4 times 16 is also 64. Okay, number 9, we need to find x. Oh, it says this is a right triangle. Find x and then find the perimeter. Well, I think that I'll just write down that these two are equal so that I can say that's 2, this is 2. If this is 6, then the one below it here is 6. If the one over on the right is 4, then the one below here is 4. That comes from the same point on the exterior. So I just found x is 6 plus 4, which is 10. And the perimeter, I'm going to add 6 plus a 6 plus a 2 plus a 2 plus a 4 plus a 4. All right, so that's going to be 10, 20, 4. All right, number 10, if that's 8, this is 8. So x plus 2 equals 8, that will give us x is 6. We got two fives. We got two nines down here on the right. And we've got two fours. And we need to add all that stuff up to get the perimeter. Perimeter is 8 plus 8 plus 5 plus 5. And if you just stick to doing these pairs, you should do well. Plus 4 plus 4. I forgot. 34, 44. Let's see. It's 52, isn't it? Now, the homework is what follows. I'm going to show you guys your quizzes from this week and let you work on getting some of these questions done. If you find one you want to ask me, I'll be happy to answer. Otherwise, I'll answer questions on this next time we see one of them.